Hey guys, my name is Sierra Cotton, and this is episode number five in our Christian Basics series. Today's topic is Do Not Conform. A very popular passage of scripture is found in Romans 12, 2, which says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that what is the acceptable, good, and perfect will of God. That's Romans 12 too. Some versions say, don't copy the customs and behaviors of this world. Either way, we know that as believers, we are called to be set apart. We're called to be holy. We're called to be righteous. We're called to be a royal priesthood. You cannot mix the secular with the sacred and that you're going to get a positive result. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24 says, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So you can't come to Christ and still live the way that you lived before you came to Christ. You cannot conform to the patterns of this world, which means you can't listen to all the same music they listen to. You can't go all the same places they go to. You can't watch all the same things they watch. You can't say all the same things they say. You have to be different. You have to be set apart. You listening to lustful, you watching lustful movies is not helping you in your spiritual walk. It's not helping you grow. We have to truly allow for the Holy Spirit to change the way we think. And the only way he can do that is if we're grounded and we're rooted in the word of God. I love Colossians 3 verses 5 through 10 which reads, So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still a part of this world. But now it's time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other. For you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. We should consider ourselves dead to sexual immorality, the impurities, the lusts, and desires of this world. We cannot try to fit in. We have to make sure that the Bible is our authoritative guide. The Bible is our final answer. If it is not lined up with God's word, then we don't entertain it. We don't engage in it. We set ourselves apart. So that means when your friends are talking about, let's go to the Beyonce concert, um, you don't go. And it's not like a legalist type thing. It's more so, think about it this way. What does her music promote? Is it promoting Christ? Or is it, is it promoting lust and greed? And just ask yourself, what does her music promote? And it's not just Beyonce. It's any artist that's out there. Because um, there's some Christian artists that are promoting more of self than they are Christ too. You have to make a decision that you are not going to just go with the flow. You're not just going to do because everyone else is doing. Even if everyone else around you is a Christian, you know it's not a lot of God's word. You still don't do it. Because you're going to have to answer and I'm going to have to answer to God on Judgment Day. And we can't say, oh, well, my best friend went, so I went. Or my best friend was doing it. Or my my mom was doing it, so I did it. Or my dad or my sisters or whoever may be was doing it. So that's why I did it too. I thought it was okay. No, we need to be mature believers. Meaning we can discern right from wrong. And ask the Holy Spirit to continue to guide us in all things. It grieves my heart when people who say they love Jesus, I see them promoting the artists and the customs and the behaviors, patterns, behavior patterns of this world. It makes me so upset and I, I end up praying for them. I end up crying to God on their behalf that God would just open their eyes to see what they're doing is not beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial for us. What are you pouring into your spirit what are you what type of seeds are you planting in your in your spirit are they seeds of holiness or seeds of lust are they seeds of righteousness 
or seeds of sexual immorality? Are they seeds of purity? Are they seeds of greed? A lot of the music of the culture of today, a lot of the shows of the culture of today, a lot of the books, a lot of the magazines, they are not okay for the believer to be engaged in. We have shows that blatantly promote homosexuality, that blatantly promote greed, that blatantly promote sexual morality, adultery, fornication, all these different things. And we watch them every single week. And then we wonder why our unbelieving friends and family don't want to listen to us when we talk about the gospel. We give them a false hope they can continue in their sin and still be right with God. And that's not the case. You may say, Sierra, oh, you're being too deep, but I'm not. This stuff is serious. We have to stop engaging in the culture and trying to conform to it in order to bring people to Christ. Now, we can't escape unbelievers. We know that. They're all around us, and we're not supposed to. We're supposed to be around amongst them. We're supposed to be lights amongst them. Darkness and light cannot mix. Either you're going to be in the darkness, or you're going to be in the light. You can't be double-minded. I'm not saying you can't watch TV. I'm not saying you can't listen to music. I'm not saying you can't go to the movies and the festivals and blah, blah, and told you to shut yourself up in your room and only listen to hymns. I'm not saying that. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we need to make sure that we are constantly watching what we put before our eyes, we put before our ears. We need to make sure that what we're entertaining is of God and that God would approve of it. Think about it like this. As you're going about your day, you're doing what you're doing, you're saying what you're saying, you're uh, listening to what you're listening to, you're watching what you're watching. Ask yourself this question. Would I be comfortable doing what I'm doing if, I, if Jesus Christ was sitting right here in the room with me? Is this what I want to be doing when Jesus Christ comes back for his church? Say, say Jesus Christ came back right now. Is what I'm doing right now pleasing unto God that I know that he would be proud of me. That he would delight in the decisions that I'm making right now. Though we can't see him, Jesus Christ is omnipresent. He's with us. So stop grieving the Holy Spirit by conforming to the pattern of this world and start bringing pleasure to him by making a decision to stand up for what is right and what is pure and what is lovely and what is good, what is excellent and worthy of praise. And the best thing about all this is that we don't have to do it on our own. We have the Holy Spirit with us. If you are a true born again believer, you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you and it is His grace, it is His empowerment that helps enable you to turn away from that temptation and that sin and that lust and that greed and that deception. We have to do our part in transforming our minds by being in this word, by worshiping, by prayer or, or through prayer. We have to make sure that we are doing our part so that our minds can be renewed so that when it comes time for us to make these decisions to stand up for what is truly right and holy and pure, that then Christ, then Holy Spirit, can enable us to obey and enable us to walk away from that which is not good. So we got to take off the old and put on Jesus Christ every single day. We have to die to ourselves. We have to put away our selfish desires, follow Christ, pick up our crosses, and follow him every single day. I know that this world is getting crazier, and the, the that which is... That which is right now seems wrong, and that which is wrong now seems right. But we as Christians have to take a stand for what is right according to the Bible. Be unapologetic about it. Be unashamed about it. Because we're here to bring God, God glory, not ourselves. We're not here to fulfill the passion and desires of our flesh. We're here to fulfill the purpose that God created for us before the war even began. I pray this video helped you guys. If you have any questions, as always, email me at sarahcotton at gmail.com. Have a great day, and God bless you. Bye, guys.